this year is, I think, going to be a very interesting year, 2024. Um, it's already like 2023 is ending rather spectacularly. Um, 2024 is going to be very interesting. And I think that we need to make a stake and a claim on 2024 before we actually enter into it. So tonight we've got a um, communion service uh, on Zoom at 11.45 we start. Um, just to, for those who are interested, if nobody turns up, I'm quite happy to Zoom myself and have communion. So no pressure, but, but that's what's, it's available for those who want to. Um, but I, even just this afternoon, I was praying about it and I've just been sensing that 2024 is like a pivotal year. It's a year that a lot of things will be decided in the realm of the spirit. But we have to make a decision for us, for ourselves personally, for our families, for the nation. Uh, it's, a, it's a pivotal year. And it's interesting that 5784 and 2024, they both end in four, yeah. which is a really interesting thing. 24, apart from a whole heap of things, there's 24 apostles named, named yeah. in, the, in the Bible. There are 24 elders, elders 24 is to do with heavenly government. Yes. Um, the 12 tribes are mentioned 24 times. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that add up to 24, but 24 is, is absolutely very, very important. And this is the decade of the mouth. And what the, the world has been able to do is shut the mouth. You know, we had the masks. Masks. I'm sounding American. We had the masks. We had the masks. Um, but this is, this is very, the words that you say in 2024 are going to be very, have to be deliberate, have to be very um, powerful, and have to be truth. Words that we speak of coming into this this whole thing. Um, 2024 is like I said, divine government, heavenly government. It's open doors, it's double doors, really. So many things are available, but there are a number of key issues, and that is obedience, faith, and surrender. In order to walk in the fullness of what God's doing, we surrender all to God. We're here, like I said in that last song, we lay our lives down for the sake of heaven. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a martyr. It just means that not my will, but God's will be done. Not my will, God's will be done. But 2024 is really um, very, very key. And so we need to make some decisions now before it actually starts. And what I've been praying about 2024, um, and what I got was, make 2024 your Goshen year. Make it a Goshen year. And occupy until he comes. Now, we don't know when he's going to come. Like, it could be next week, it could be two weeks, it could be two, 20 years. We don't know. Even Jesus himself does not know when he is coming back. So we are to live like he's coming back tonight, but plan for a hundred years. But 2024, make it a Goshen year. And that means that we are separated from the things of the world. That means that what the world goes through, we don't necessarily have to. Um, and then we are to occupy till he comes. So that's, that's the, like where I'm headed. And I wish that Gwyn was here because I've actually got PowerPoints with the end. We would really appreciate this. But I just want to go through some a couple of um, if you turn to Exodus chapter 8. You don't have to you don't have to turn your Bible to these. These are just up there. This is Old Testament foundation. So Exodus 8, verse 22 to 24. Says that in that day, this is the um, fourth plague that uh, came upon Egypt. This is the fourth plague. Four again, number four, and it's the first time that Goshen is mentioned. And in verse 22, it says that in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. So that is the very reason that they would know that I am, He wow. is the Lord in the midst of the land. 
And as we partake by faith, as we decide that 2024 is going to be my Gosha year, yeah. this is a year where I'm redemptive. Yes. I'm set apart from the things of the world. I am, you know, that Woo! means that we're going to have to pull back from some things that, that we actually do that are not sinful. Maybe you might have to turn off your favourite TV program. Maybe, you know, whatever it might be. But we're going to have to pull back a little bit. Because if this is going to be, if this is going to be 2024, we've got to be separated to the world. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3 says that we are dead to this world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we are dead to it. And so, um, and the reason for the, the redemptive part, the reason that Goshen was set apart, was that the people would know that he is the Lord. And in Exodus chapter 9, verses 4 to 7, it says... And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. So nothing shall die. Nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. Then the Lord appointed a set time saying, tomorrow the Lord will do this thing. Livestock is business. Livestock is also a food supply, but it's business. In those days, it was an agricultural thing. So livestock is talking about business. And he says in that day, when, when this curse is released, when this plague is released, nothing, nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. This is a year of abundant life. So we, we have to set this by faith before we step into it, right? So good. We step it by faith. So Exodus 9, 16 says this is the purpose but indeed for this purpose, that this purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, that my name may be declared in all the earth. Yes. And so recognize that God wants his name, you know, revealed, his power revealed. Yes. This is what we're here for. Yes. We're here for a cause that is yes. bigger than our own lives. Yes. We're here for something that is bigger than we are. We are here for something that God has yes. called us to occupy. Yes. And it's not just getting up, going to work yes. and going home. It's not just going through life like the world does. It is possessing your destiny. It is walking into the fullness of the call of God upon your life, whatever that might be. Whether you think I'm too old, I'm, I'm you know, past it, whatever it might be. I don't give a rip what you think. Yeah. The thing is, God has said something yeah. about you in yeah. your book of destiny, and God is expecting us to step into it. And so this year is the year that we do this. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're here for a cause that is Amen. bigger than ourselves. Yeah. Our cause is to exalt the name of the Lord. Come on. Yes. Our cause is to reveal yes. the power of our God. Come on. That is what we're here for. It is Woo. not about us. Yes. It is not about seeing the kids through school. That's it is not about paying off the mortgage. It is not about any of that. It is yeah. seeking first God's kingdom and what he desires before we do anything else. This is what it's about. <laughs> and this is the battle line that's been drawn. Yep. And so we step into this year saying, God, I'm going all out for you, yeah. recognising yeah. that I cannot go all out for God in my own strength. Yeah. I need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I need his grace. Yeah. I need him to do it. But I'm here to say, God, I'm a living sacrifice. I will do what you desire. But it's your grace that equips. It's your spirit that empowers. It's you that does the work in me. But I'm here ready to follow whatever you just to say. But we can no longer live a small life. We can no longer live a life that is dictated by the things that the world is concerned about. It is what does the Lord want? How do I serve the Lord today? What do I do to please him today? Yeah. It's a different year. And because it's a different year, we step into it differently. Um, now, Exodus 9, 26. says that only in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel are, there was no hail. So again, there was hail that was coming. But in the land of Goshen, in the land, in the land of where his people lived, there would be no hail, no devastation, no destruction. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, we've learned a lesson from the tornado that came through. Like I slept through it, had no idea anything was happening. Um, pray for Val and Bill. They're without power until about the 10th of January. Um, Ruth and Peter, possibly get it back tomorrow or the day after. Um, so people have had some hardships to work through, so people come to mind and pray for them. But what I'm saying is that if he can do that in the Old Testament, yeah. right, if he can do that in the Old Testament, he can do it now. Yeah. 
And as for me and my as for me and my household, as for me and my church, yeah. we will walk as in Goshen. Yes. Exempt from the things of the world. Oh, yeah. We're not under that. We live under an open heaven. Yes. Right? Yes. And so it's recognizing this is what God's called you to. This is what God is, is saying. I want you to set this. This is part of being set apart. I've called you. I've set you apart from the people of the world. I've set you apart from their ways, he said. I've set you apart. I've called you unto me. So let me demonstrate my power, my influence, my greatness, my grandeur, my majesty through your lives. Which means it's not just about getting up and going to work. It's not just about doing your, your normal whatever, whatever. It is about understanding that the glory of God wants to be shown in you, through you and over you. That yes. God wants to do more with your life than you've ever thought he could do. That what you think, well, I can't do that. I'm too young, too old, too fat, too thin, too poor, too rich, whatever. It doesn't matter. If God has called you, that's all that matters. Otherwise, we're in disobedience, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we're looking at these things. In Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 to 23 is where all the lights went out except in, um, in Goshen. So stretch out your hand toward heaven, the Lord said to Moses, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had lined in the doorways. Yeah. All of mine, all the children, right? We are to put on the armour of might. Yeah. Yeah. We are to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what God was dealing with there was Ra, the Egyptian supreme God, the sun God that the Egyptians worshipped. And he's saying, but, you know, doesn't that, I'm, I'm dealing with that God, but my people, my people will walk in the light. My people will live in the light. My people will be unaffected by the judgment that has been released upon the world. Yeah. Right, come on. The only thing that separates us from the people of, of the dark of the world really is our faith. And the presence of God, Moses said, the only thing that separates us from the people of the world is the fact that God's presence goes with us. Well, if God's presence goes with us, that means no weapon formed against me can prosper. If God's presence goes with us, that means that I can step upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means. So if God's presence goes with us, that means that, you know, when everything fails, we don't. It means that we have provision if the world does it. It means that we're able to bless others. Come on, if God is with you, what are you accepting in your life and tolerating? If God is with you. <coughs> and Exodus 11, 6 and 7. Where is it? Then there shall be a great cry. This is where the firstborn dies. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as it was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between Egyptians and Israel. The Lord does make a difference between us and the people of the world. He does make a difference. And it says that a dog would not even lick. Right, come on. What are you expecting in your life? It doesn't matter what your circumstances are saying. What are you expecting? A clear distinction. I am expecting a clear distinction between my life and the life of the people in the world. A clear distinction. A clear distinction. That's what it's all about. But we have to recognize this. Psalm 107, verse 1 and 2 says, and find it. I bought myself a new Bible because it's a new year. I always buy a new Bible every year because you tend to get a bit too familiar sometimes with the word. It's a new year, new translation. And I thought, yeah, I like this one. And every verse was a separate line and it was one column. And I thought, yeah, I like this one. But then I found out verses are missing. Verse 21 in Matthew chapter 17 is missing. John 5, chapter verse 4 is missing. And I thought, no, I don't want to be reading verse, you know, no. Three to five, and this verse four. I want every every verse in there. So I thought, well, 
I guess that's going to the op shop. So, Psalm 107, verses 1 and 2 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah. You're supposed to speak out your redemption. Yes. That he has redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. Every morning when you get up, God, I just give you thanks. And not only are you renewing my youth, thank you, thank you, but you have redeemed me from the hand of the enemy. I am the redeemed of the Lord. <laughs> that should be coming out of your mouth every single day. I am the redeemed of the Lord. My life is redeemed. My family is redeemed. My work is redeemed. My finances are redeemed. Everything in my life is redeemed. I am the redeemed of the Lord. And Psalm 105, verses 6 and 7, it says in verse 6, 105, Psalm 105, oh, sorry, Psalm 103. I'm in the wrong thing. Psalm 103, verse 5, verse 6. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. That's the throne of God. That's the throne of God. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. So he's saying right there, he will execute righteousness and justice from his throne for all who are oppressed. If you are oppressed financially, if you are oppressed physically with some kind of a sickness or a disease, he will execute righteousness and justice on your behalf. And then it says in verse 7, he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of God. One of the things that you press into God for this year is that you would know his ways. Yes. It's one thing to see what God has done. It's another thing to know why he did it. Yes. You have to know the ways of God. Yes. Why, God, what is your way in this? Yes. That will come out and you'll see the act then. But, you know, what's the point of seeing his acts if you can't, if you don't understand his yes. ways? His ways will separate you. You need to know the ways of God. So God, show me your ways. Teach me your ways. What is your will, your way? But so often we pray to know the will of God, but we do it our way. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of God's will, God's way. That's the end of the story. God's will, God's way. And so I am the redeemed of the Lord. Righteousness and justice are released on my behalf whenever the enemy tries to oppress me. And I know the ways of God. I am a woman of God, a man of God, and I know the ways of God. Yes. Because I seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all things are being added unto me. And the posture in Rome in 2024, your posture is as a king. Your prayer time, your prayer closet, you will be a priest. You will worship, intercede, you know, seek the face of God, hunger to hear his heart, know what he's wanting to say. But when you step out of your prayer closet, you have been given the gift of righteousness. You have been given an abundance of grace. And you are to reign and rule in life as a king through Jesus Christ. You are to rule and reign in life. Life is not to rule and reign over you. Is this making sense? Yes. You are going to have to start to get a bit of a righteous anger on the inside if life is trying to rule you. How dare it? How dare it come against an anointed of God? You're all the anointed of God. Days will serve you. You will not serve your days. Days will serve you. You will tell your days that they will serve you. Day, you will serve me. I say it every day. Day, you will serve me today with whatever the Lord puts on my heart. You will serve me with prosperity and wisdom. You will serve me with provision and protection. Whatever he lays on my heart, but day, you will serve me. I will not serve you. Step into your righteousness. Step into your authority. Take control over your life under the lordship of Jesus Christ. It's under his lordship. It's not about you being a maverick. It's not about you stepping out. It's coming under his lordship. So 2024 is a Goshen year. Occupy till he comes. Align with heaven's government. Live, actually live the abundant life that he came to give us. Yeah? Sometimes I look at my life and it is not that abundant. And I think, what well, you might think. Jesus came to give me a life of abundance. So life, you better get your act together. Because Jesus came to give me a life of abundance, I'm not accepting anything less. I will not accept deception. You know that I'm into David on your depot, devouring his books, studying his books. 
And one of his children, he has such a thing for the Word of God. The Word of God is the beginning, the Word of God is the end. That's it. What the Word of God says, end of story. And um, and it's really refreshing because I was born into this like 50 years ago or whatever. And um, but he was saying that when his one of his his first son was born and he started to tea, he became like a very unhappy baby. And he's got a fever and he's, you know upset and he's crying and everything and he said to his wife is this normal <laughs> and she said all babies get a bit feverish when they're teething and he said well i need to see that in the word of god yeah. so he went to his office got out his bible and studied it to see what happens when children teeth he didn't see anything but he did find out that children are a blessing from the lord and then he found that other scripture that says the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and he has no sorrow with it. So he came out and he prayed for his son and he said, son, you are a blessing to me. But I will not accept any sorrow that comes. And from that point on, there's no symptoms of teething in any of his children. And I've got some things that are going on in my family. <clears throat> that I need God to do some stuff in. But I, it's just changed my whole attitude. Father, I just want to thank you that my family is a blessing. Oh. I am blessed with my family. And I refuse to accept any sorrow that will try to hitchhike in on the back of a yeah, blessing. That's so good. In Jesus' that's name. So come on. You have more authority so in life than what you realise. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Ooh, more authority than what you realise. We've got to live in abundance of, of the We, we yeah. live from the finished work of the cross. Understand covenant, the victory of Christ. We live from the victory of Christ, not for the victory. Yeah. Christ has done a finished work. He is complete. It's a victorious work. And so I am as victorious as Christ and I live from his victory. Amen. Amen. So it's knowing your identity. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You're a member of a royal household. You're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. It's knowing your position. You are a king. You are to rule and reign in life as a king. You are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. It's knowing your authority, that you have as much authority in the words that you say, in the way that you live as Jesus Christ, because he said all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now you go. So he has given us his authority. He has given us by power of attorney, if you like, the authority to walk in his authority. And it's recognising that you live from a place of ascension that you are already seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are seated far above any kind of dominion, principality, power, or name that can be named in this age or in the world to come. You are already far above. They cannot reach you. Nothing in the second heaven. You are seated far above. When you recognise that this is who you are, you are in Christ, Christ is in you. There you are one with him but you are seated far above and that when you step out, you step out from the heaven authority. You step out because you're seated in heavenly places with Christ and you decree something, you are speaking into the second realm. You are speaking into earth and you are releasing the voice of God. You are releasing the authority of Christ. You are releasing the will of God upon this earth. You are far above principalities and powers. That is what the word of God says. Ephesians chapter 1, around about verse 20, I think it is. Ephesians chapter 3 you are seated far above yeah you are seated far above and so what understand and this is something that we don't get the devil has been defeated yeah. he was defeated at the cross yeah. he has no authority all authority belongs to Jesus Christ the only power that the enemy has is deception yeah. and we have truth and they tried to bury truth, but it rose again in three days. Yeah. We live by the truth of the word of God. We live by the spirit of truth. But you are in right now, Ephesians 2, succeeded in Christ, with Christ in heavenly places, far above. Yeah. Principalities and powers and names and, and, and all of that, you're far above it. Do you understand? That's why it says, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Nothing shall by any means harm you. You are seated far above. You can live above the snake line. You can live above the snake line. So there is, and, and we have to live purposely. 2024 is to be a life of living with purpose. Yeah, you know how sometimes we forget about the purpose because we get caught up in the busyness of the days. 
We get up, we go to work, we go home, we get up, we go to work, we come home, we get up, we go shopping, we come home. And, <coughs> pardon me. And we just kind of go through the days, but we're not purposefully this year. But there is a purpose beyond a normal Christian lifestyle. There's a purpose beyond the blessing. There is a purpose beyond the freedom that we have in Christ. And that purpose is to fulfill the destiny that God has placed upon your life. He has a position or a place that he has designed and ordained for you to occupy on behalf of the kingdom. And let me tell you, when Australia will become a sheep nation, and I'm stealing this from Bobby Atkins, who's speaking there, Australia will become a sheep nation when we all take our rightful position and we come like a, a woven net over the nation. You know, as, as Terry steps into his assignment, as Jenny steps into hers, as an all stepping into the blood, which I probably need. As Russell steps into his assignment, as Leah steps into hers, as Kate, as Cambry, as Janice, as uh, Shelley, as we all step into our assignments, as we all take our rightful place, as we come together, man, that the kingdom of God is being established in such a way that it has to affect the heart of the nation. Yeah. We become a sheep nation when we all take our rightful place. Let me tell you something, D.L. Moody, that a mighty evangelist, that mighty man of God, do you know who he was saved by? A shoe salesman. If that shoe salesman had not had his mind on Christ when D.L. Moody moved in and walked into that shoe store, if he wasn't prepared to talk about Christ as he sold shoes, D.L. Moody might never have been saved. He was a shoe salesman in the right place at the right time. That was his assignment. Where you are is your assignment. And if you're not comfortable where you are, if you can't find the grace of God where you are, then ask God to put you where the grace is. I am praying for day work for you. Make day work. You know, but, but you've got to have the grace of God upon your life. So he has a place that's designed and ordained for you to occupy on behalf of the kingdom. Occupy. What are we to occupy? Not the third realm because we're already seated up there with Christ. Not the second realm because Satan's already been defeated. We are to occupy the earth realm, the, the atmosphere around the earth. Satan is already defeated and we have the victory of Christ. So we are to occupy the earth, the realm of the earth, until the time that Jesus returns. The command is to occupy. It is not to defeat Satan. Do you want us not to defeat Satan? Because he's already defeated. Yeah. Right? He's already defeated. Yeah. He's already under your feet. He's already destroyed. Yeah. It's just that he thinks he's just putting up a bit of a fight. And he's full of lies and deception. But he's got diminishing resources. He's only got a third of the angels. More and more Christians have been born again every day. Yeah. But do you know what? Over 66,000 people die every day because they have heard the gospel. 66,000 people die every day who have not heard the gospel. I think we need to do something about that. We need to start thinking about those kinds of things. I believe that the greatest enemy that you're going to face in 2024 is going to be your soul. Your unrenewed soul. Satan is under your feet. Get that in your head. You just got to release the authority and he goes. In the name of Jesus. Remember the James Kowalia video? He said when Morris Cirillo went into a town, they had to flee so many miles out and stay out for so many days because just at the mention of the name, they would either be converted or die. So remember that. You walk in a victory that, that most of us haven't got a revelation of yet. But it's the soul. It is the unrenewed soul. It's the mindset that has not been changed. That is our greatest yes. enemy. Don't you think? Mm. Yes. I don't mind having a go at the enemy. I don't mind saying, get back in Jesus' name or get out in Jesus' name. I know my authority. I know he's defeated. But it's this thing. It's this thing. When I have been trained to live the world's way for so long before I got born again. It's this thing. You know, that, that it would, you know, we have this thing, well, I've been hurt before, so I've been hurt again. I know for years because of my divorce, well, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody first before they say goodbye to me. I'm not going through that pain again. And so we wire these things into ourselves, right? 
Yeah. So it's the mind. Because if you look at the great commandment, we are to love the Lord our God oh. with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. Yeah. Nothing in there about defeating Satan. But every part of who we are is to love him. Now, I know that parts of me that don't love him. I'm not the only one. I'm tired. Well, I think I'll just lie down and have an ice pop and sleep. Or have the ice pop and fall asleep. <laughs> or, I'll, you know, or I'll get depressed. Oh, I think I'll just lie down and just veg out in front of the telly. That's not the devil. That's me suggesting to me what I should be doing. Right, that's an enemy. The works of the flesh, the unrenewed soul, the mindset, the fact that I'm not living in the fruit of the spirit, that's a problem. If I'm living in the fruit of the spirit, nothing can bring a charge against me legally in the realm of the kingdom. But there's, I'm not, I wish I was, but I don't always live in the fruit of the spirit. What? You yeah, know, it's a shock to the body. <laughs> You know, but we've got to recognize these things, honestly. So we have to learn to live from the inside out. Sometimes I think the biggest enemy we have is the soul issue. If we do not understand that God has a purpose for every single day of our lives, it's not just about for ministry, it's not just about when I go to the States or Singapore. In every single day there is a purpose that he has for me to accomplish. It's a soul issue. So to occupy, we occupy by authority. Matthew 28, we know all of that. We know that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus Christ. So is there any authority left to be given to anybody else? No. Nope. Satan doesn't have it. The world doesn't have it. But he has it. So in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. New Bible, everything sticks to heaven. Mark chapter 1, verse 22. When Jesus was teaching and he did cast out an unclean spirit, it says in verse 21, they went into the Pernium and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. See, authority is key. You've got to know your authority. That's why when the storms come, you've got your authority. So in Jesus' name, I rebuke you. There will be no damage, there will be no damage done in my home. I need to think of the city, not just myself. But you know, like, but you know that the authority that you have there, he taught as one with authority. And quite often you can hear people preach and you can see people live and they can quote the word of God, but it doesn't mean that the authority is flowing from them. Because I'm one with Christ. There is no separation. I am united with him, one with the spirit of God. Therefore, the authority that he's got flows into me. And so this is how it works. <clears throat> we teach as one, or live as one, having authority. Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. So I want you to get your, so understand this. People ask for healing. And what do we do? We pray. Right? Did Jesus ever once pray for anybody to be healed? No. no. It was all a command. It was all a release of authority. Be healed. You know, or there's a spit in the eye and, and mud and whatever and go to the pool. But he never once prayed for anybody to be healed. He commanded healing. Be healed. What is it that you want? Let it be done to you according to your faith. But he didn't pray. He knew the Father's will. So in Matthew chapter 9, verse 1, it says, So Jesus got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such authority to men. 
And look at this, it's easier to say. Authority is released through your words. Mm. It's easier to say, or should I say this? So he said, every time he spoke, he released authority. In Mark chapter 11, just let me flip over to Mark 11. And it said that they were surprised at the authority that had been given to a man. Mark 11, we know this in, in verses 21, 22, and 23. So Jesus says, have the, the God kind of faith. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes the things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Four times the word says, once is belief. Four times the word says, what you say is more important than really almost anything else. What are you saying? What's coming out of your mouth? What are you releasing as a self-prophecy over your life? What are you actually speaking? So 2024 being the decade of the mouth, what you say is going to be really important. It must line up with the word of God. That's good. It must. Otherwise, you know, you say stuff like, well, my back's killing me. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Or I never have enough money at the end of the week to do what I need to do. Guess what? You are prophesying lack or disease over your life. You know, out of your mouth comes life or death. There's no in between. As a king, you release life. As a king, you decree life. As a king, you say. And, you know, four times in Mark 11, 23, 24, four times it's about what he says. Once it's about what he believes. So your words must line up. So if you find stuff coming out of your mouth that does not line up with what you think you believe, then there is a problem in the soul. Listen to yourselves. When my kids and I were learning this, if I said anything, that was contrary to the word of God, they would say to me, well, if that's what you want. And then I realized what I'd said is, no, I don't want that. I rebuke those words in Jesus' name. So your authority is released through the words that you speak. Goshen. Make this year and your life a Goshen year. Or Goshen, whatever it's pronounced. But occupy. Occupy your life. Occupy your position. Occupy your destiny. Occupy where God has placed you. Occupy it. Romans 5.17, you've been given the gift of righteousness and an abundance of grace. And you are to rule and reign in life as a king through Jesus Christ. Authority. Authority stems from when you know your identity in Christ. You know who you are in Christ. You know that you're born again. You know you're a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You know that you're one with God. You know that you're in Christ and Christ is in you. You know this. You know your identity. You know that you're a son. You know that you're a member of a royal household. You know that you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You know these things. You know that you're a citizen of the kingdom. When you know these things, the, the, the authority just flows out of you when you speak. It happens. You don't have to work it up. You don't have to stir it up. You just speak something and it happens. Romans chapter 8 verses 1 and 2 says that there is no condemnation for you that for you are in Christ Jesus. So anytime you start to feel condemned, I am so passionate about this. I'm sorry if I'm it's so oh, good. Yeah. But I'm really Don't to see you in a transformed light yes, this year. On. I really need to see you transformed. I need to see your lives transformed. I need to see your finances transformed. I need to see you fulfilling your destiny, obeying the call of God upon your life. You know where it says in Romans 11, 29, that the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance or irrevocable? The gift is the talents, the things that God has placed on the inside of you, but the call is a different word and it means it is an invitation. Yeah. The call of God is an invitation. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. You are invited to participate in the call of God, but are you going to? That's what it means in the Greek. It is an invitation. The gifts is charisma. 
But the invitation, the call is an actual invitation. Are you going to accept the invitation that God has placed before you to, for the call of God upon your life? Are you going to say no? Remember Marcus Bishop when he came out, you know, when he was thinking he's doing so good with his church. And God said, You weren't the first one I called. Mm. And Marcus went, Well, surely the second. No. Well, I must have been the third. No. I think he was the 13th or the 14th. And he was shocked. Like, well, that's a bit humbling. I God didn't even make the first 10. But he was, but, but that was it. But people have free will. You can yes. turn away from the call of God on your life. Or you can believe that there's a call of God upon your life, but you don't do the things that he requires you to do so you can step into it. But many are called, but few are chosen. So you've got to make sure you do the things that allow you to be chosen of God, right? So I'm looking for transformation. Me too, I want it in my life. God has called you. There is a purpose for you to live. There is a destiny upon your life. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weighty thing. It carries the glory of God. It'll be released as a glory when you step into it. There will be a convergence when you step into these things. It will not converge. And you think, yes, this is what I was born for. Does not come without its difficulties, but you have the authority. And as you release your authority through the words that you speak, power follows. Power follows authority. See, if it was just a man in a policeman's outfit who stood in front of the traffic and held up his hand, if it was just a man, he would be run over. But because he's in a policeman's suit, the government of God, uh, the government of the country backs him as so people with all the police. You know, we all take our foot off the, the, the accelerator, we all slow down a bit. We all act a little bit better if there's a police car around us and as we drive. Because of the police, because it's a government thing, because there is a that there is an authority and a power. So when you walk in the authority of God, because you are a son of God, you are an heir of God, you are a joint heir with Him, you are a member of a royal household, you're an ambassador for Christ. Because you are a son or a daughter of the Most High, there is an authority that is being imbued within you to walk in the fullness of that authority. When you release that through your words, power. Follows. Power forms. Now there will be times when you think, man, I'm not up to this. So Jesus, you know, do you want to rebuke this? How do I handle this? A lot of people often say when the uh, angel spoke of the Lord rebuke, the Lord rebuke you. That was not a man. That was an angel rebuking, right? So that's not the same thing. But there are times when you think, well, I'm not too sure about this. Be, be comfortable. Ask the Father. Ask Jesus. To, to rebuke it for you, to do that. But understand that there is a certain amount of authority that's been given to you. And you've got to walk in it. Kenneth Hagin tells the story of when he was um, having a face-to-face -face meeting with Jesus. And then all of a sudden, this little demon starts running around. But Jesus doesn't do anything. And then as he's continuing to talk face to face with Jesus and he's getting instructions about his ministry and everything else, the little demon starts to puff confusion and, and, and like smoke between him and Jesus. Now it's getting hard to see Jesus, no one necessarily even hearing. And he's thinking to himself, why isn't Jesus doing anything? Why isn't Jesus doing anything? And in the end, he sort of, I, I, I can't handle this. I need to hear what Jesus is saying. So he rebuked the demon and it immediately left. And he said to Jesus, why didn't you do that? And Jesus said, because I gave earth to people. The heavens belong to God, but the earth belongs to people. And that's why he needed to find Abraham, who would give up his son so that Jesus could come through as a human being. So recognizing who you are, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, that you are seated, you are already now by location in the natural. We're all sitting here together, but in the heavenlies, your spirit is seated with Christ in heavenly places, and you're a member of a royal household. So Psalm 24, when we enter in, we're going to do a prophetic exercise in just a minute, but I sense that this is important 
the stepping into praise God is very cool. I'm just making that as a prophetic declaration. <laughs> Um, Psalm 24, verse 7, lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your heads, you gates of 2024. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors of 2024. Let the King of glory shall come in. And who is this King of glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And who is this King of glory? Well, he is the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. So when you enter into 2024, you make sure, first of all, that you come through righteous, that you come through purified, that you, you know, have actually, you, you've been, you've, you know that you're forgiven of every sin, transgression, iniquity. You know that because you're entering in to a new thing, you're crossing a threshold into a new era. And so it needs to be a purity of heart, purity of mind, purity of motives. You know, ask God, like, forgive me, cleanse me, let me be pure by the blood of the Lamb. And as I enter in through 2024, I enter in through the power of the door because the door is Jesus Christ. So as I step over this threshold into 2024, I step over the threshold and I step through the door of Jesus, but I am following the King of glory. I am not going first. I am following the King of glory. And entering 2024 like this, surrendered, obedient. 2024 is a year of, of, of surrender. It's not about this is what I want. It's about what he wants. It is always about what he wants. It's about surrender and it's about obedience. And the thing to remember, oh, my gosh, if you could just get this in the spiritual realm, you are crowned with glory and honour. He's made you a little lower than Elohim, a little lower than God himself, and you are crowned with glory and honour. So in the spirit realm, when you move around, you're something to be reckoned with, crowned with glory, crowned with honour. And yet when we come and we live it out in the natural, we don't act like we're crowned with glory and honour. We don't talk or act like we're sons and daughters of the Most High. We don't talk and act like we're kings. We allow things that should not be allowed, not just in our lives, but in our nation. And when we pray, we pray not talking about us, but, you know, when all the prayer that went up for this nation, the same-sex marriage and everything else, nothing changed. Legislation passed. Why? Because we did not pray judicially. We prayed like beggars. God, would you please? God, would you mind? God, can you do this? God, please. When he's given authority to us, recognize how to pray. And you ought to read the Lord's Prayer in the One New Man Bible. It's quite abrupt. Lord, you must give me this day. You must give me this day my daily bread. You must. Why? Because we have a covenant. So we're going to go into a prophetic activation. So the questions to ask yourself is, what is it that God wants you to occupy? Because we do need to work out our salvation with fear and tremor. <coughs> Not fear as in fear, but reverence. Awesome respect. And when it says the kingdom of God's kingdom come, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Yeah. So therefore, God's kingdom come. Let it come out of you. Let it manifest in your life. Covenant prayer, covenant lifestyle. Remember the James Kawali video that we watched? What happened there, the thing that caused everything to fall apart, was because they allowed the distractions of, of the enemy to pull them away from their covenant prayer or their covenant lifestyle. So with the pastor, it was his daughter got sick, and then somebody bought him a house, and people got jealous, and people did this. Old wounds were opened up. Make sure that your heart is pure. And like Psalm 23, Lord Jesus, restore my soul. If I've got any heart wounds, any soul wounds, like restore me. 
Remember the video of James Paul when we go back and watch it. Every time you watch it, there's new revelation of how the enemy works through deception to pull us out of where God wants to take us. The kingdom is not about achieving. It actually is about resting and receiving. Jesus said, you know, if you're tired, lonely, burn out by religion, come. Watch me, see how I do it. Walk with me. I'm lowly and gentle in heart. So you need to rest and receive, which leads to supernatural fruitfulness and outcomes. Mary did the one thing necessary, remember, because she sat at the feet of Jesus. Martha's fussing around in the kitchen doing all the stuff, but Mary sat. Yeah. But after she sat, I would have, I would think that she would get up and do because she's heard. Mm -hmm. She's come from a place of rest. She has not come from a place of busyness. She's not come from a place of striving. It's not about toiling. It is simply about I have been with my Jesus. And he's shown me what I am to do. And now I can do it by his grace. So much different than the toiling and the striving. Anytime you feel that you're toiling or striving, stop. Because you're in the ways of the world, not the ways of God. Action is to proceed from rest. So we're going to do a bit of um, prophetic action. Um, Danny, we're going to need the certain music shortly. So there's going to be two questions. And you're going to need to prepare your heart and mind. And um, turn off, if you've got an inner critic or an inner cynic, turn it off. If you've got any unbelief, turn it off. Just focus on Jesus. And we're going to ask God some questions. The first question is, God, what lies do I believe about myself? And then the second one is, God, what is true about me? So I got this out of a course I'm doing. Then you need to recode the mind. I let go of the line that says, I'm no good, worthless, fat, whatever. And I receive the truth about me that says, I'm a woman of God, or whatever it might be. So that is the first question that you ask. God, what are the lies that I, that I believe about myself? We're going to have some music going. We're going to give you about seven, seven minutes or so, ten minutes. The other question that we ask, God, what lies do I believe about 2024? And what is the truth about 2024 that I need to know? The reason I'm putting that one in is because I got my divorce papers Christmas time. I had um, six children, six and under, and I got divorce papers Christmas time. And it was just hard. It was heartbreaking. It was horrible. It was terrible. And I had um, really no hope. I wasn't a Christian. Nothing. So I really had nothing, so, and, and it was just hard. And so in my head, I was already wiring that every, every Christmas, New Year is gonna be hard. And it got to the stage where I started to think, Lord, if this, if this New Year is gonna be as hard as the last one, I don't wanna live. And so I battled um, suicide for years around Christmas, New Year, because of the wiring of my head, right? So sometimes we've got things wired in that we believe a certain thing that we're not even aware of. And I, I suddenly realized, I call it the, the um, anniversary demon. But I started to recognize every Christmas, New Year, I just don't want to live, I just want to, I want to check out. And then I thought, oh, goodness, that's not abundant life, that's not God. So then it started to make me put the dots together. Um, so there's sometimes that, you know, we, we might think about a new year, think, well, if it's been as hard as this one, if I still don't know what my destiny is by the end of next year, if I'm still in a financial mess, if I, my family's still like whatever, whatever it might be, but we've got stuff in our mind that we're not even conscious that we're thinking. That's what the subconscious does. It's all over the conscious level, right? So this is why we ask God, what are the lies that I'm believing about me? What are the lies I'm believing about 2024? What is the truth about me? What is the truth about 2024? And then recoding the mind. So I'll leave that up. So I'm just going to pray. 
And then it's really good if you want to make a, a, a decree about what you, the truth that's been revealed, that you put it in words that say, I, I see this truth, I feel this truth. Um, yeah, the, the way of people. I see it, I feel it, I hear it, and I know it. That covers the auditory, visual, kinesthetic, and intellectual mindsets. Right? Covers everything. But sometimes, you know, I just, I see I see myself as, and then whatever it was that God showed you. And I feel so good because I, I God has said I'm this. Or um, I love hearing this truth that God is telling me about myself. And I'm so glad that this truth is knowledge to me now. So start to, to sort of build it into your life. Start to do these things. So Holy Spirit, I just pray right now that you would establish the truths that have been revealed to the people. Establish them in our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Establish them in our wills. Rewire our mindsets. Give us new neural pathways. Destroy the old pathways in our mindset. I pray that these truths would go deeply into our souls and into our identity. That we would see the truth, that we would feel the truth, that we would sense the truth, um, hear the truth, and know the truth in Jesus' name. That it would truly be an outworking of truth in our lives.